Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. Well, that was particularly embarrassing, wasn't it? I appreciate the right buttons, but the one to say, share the screen. So, g'day, everyone, and welcome to a rather embarrassing beginning to talk nerdy to me. Uh, I'm here with my co-hosts, again, MPS and Jeffro. Feel free to laugh at my expense. How are we, lads? All right, dude. That's not the first technical error we have and probably won't be the last. So, let's just uh, move along, move along. So, uh, now, last week, we actually completely forgot to mention what year we're going to discuss. So, we, uh, in our infinite wisdom, the three of us just made up a year, 1999. Yes, the year that the um, moon base alpha sort of decided to chuff off into, into space. But uh, that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing other stuff regarding 1990, 1999. So, uh, MPS, I'm going to hand it over to you, son. So, uh, give us some 1999, you know, like party well, on. We're going to party like it's 1999, even though Prince did the song years and years earlier. So, mm. um, look, 1999 was an interesting year. A lot of things were going on. It was the end of a millennium. Uh, it was something that we hadn't seen, the end of a 100-year cycle as well. Uh, so there were things that we had to worry about. Um, at the time, the human population of the world surpassed 6 billion people. So, I know, we're at 7 billion plus, or is it 8 billion now? I can't. I can't keep up with the numbers anymore. Um, in terms of technology and what sort of happened at the time, uh, Napster was released. Remember what Napster yeah. was? Oh, there's a name you haven't heard in a while, isn't yeah. there? The music sharing um, app that uh, yeah. took well by storm. And Metallica got pissed off about it. Uh, a few people got peeved about it. Can you tell me what film, uh, and it wasn't a sci-fi film, uh, Napster's referred to in which uh, Seth Green says he created his character created it. Jeffrey, oh, you might get this one. Uh, Seth Green. Um, just What's about Austin Seth Powers? Green. No, it wasn't Austin Powers. Non sci fi. Oh. Good guess. Yeah, no. The Italian job with oh, Charlize okay. Theron and Mark Wahlberg. He actually is part of the crew that says he created uh, Napster. Uh, well done, Ed. Thanks for coming up. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Bill Clinton was acquitted of not being uh, with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. SpongeBob premieres in the US. There's something interesting. And that's been going on for how long now? You'd know that, Jeffrey. You're, I'm guessing your son's just, into it. I was just thinking that Bill Clinton should have used the SpongeBob when he was in <laughs> <laughs> and moving right along, uh, yeah. Australian, Australian voters <laughs> decide to keep the Queen and not become a republic. See, that's been 20 <laughs> years. And now look, she's still around. In terms of technology, uh, Internet Explorer version 5 was released. <laughs> Mel- <laughs> I don't know. What are we up to now? Who knows? Uh, the Melissa email virus infects more than a million computers. Oh, geez, I remember uh, that too. Yeah. yeah. The Mars Climate Orbit Reaches Mars, uh, Orbiter Reaches Mars, uh, but due to software error taking spaceship too close to the surface and is destroyed by atmospheric stresses and friction. Uh, the US successfully tests a new anti-intercontinental intercontinental missile, miss, missile <laughs> defense system. Oh, we're having bugs, bugs and bugs. Can you say that again? I missed it. <laughs> All right. The U.S. successfully tests a new anti-intercontinental missile defense system. Take that. When did you say uh, that in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to feel left out that you were screwing up tonight. Uh, the year 2000, uh, Y2K problem uh, bug came along, which freaked out every person who owned anything electronic. Um, MySpace was officially introduced to the Internet. Bluetooth was announced. Uh, and the genetic code that comprise of, oh, geez, I can't even spell that, that one. Uh, basically, the chromosome 22 is released to the public domain, uh, so genetic stuff. We could just do that. Uh, another, another celebratory year for 1999 was, it was Mattel's Barbie doll celebrating its 40th birthday, or her 40th birthday. Uh, popular musicians at the time. 
Oh, some of these are going to be... <laughs> I can't, can't believe I'm going to say some of these names. Uh, obviously, Lenny Kravitz, Britney Spears, Enrique Iglesias, for those of the uh, European uh, <laughs> audience. Uh, Kid Rock, Madonna, Sure. Apparently one of my favorite, according to my sister, S Club 7. Uh, <laughs> well, what can I say? Christina Aguilera, uh, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Backstreet Boys, J-Lo, before she was J-Lo, uh, Pearl Jam, Foo Fighters, Ricky Martin, uh, and where's he today? Uh, Eminem, Limp Biscuit, which I always thought was a weird name for a band. Uh, the Offspring... Red Hot Chili Peppers, yeah, something like that, dude. Uh, Santana, Shania Twain, TLC, Blink 182, uh, as part of those um, popular musicians musicians of that year. And TV shows that were still popular, um, which we'll skip to that, and I'll jump to the TV shows that were, that had started in 1999. So Futurama started in 1999. Uh, Family Guy, The Sopranos, West Wing, SpongeBob, as we mentioned before, Roswell, which was a great series. I love that. Angel started in 1999. The S I was going to say The Simpsons, but that's 89. Uh, Dilbert, for those who ever mm -hmm. followed those comics, and that only went for a year. Uh, the scary thing about Dilbert comics, for anybody who used to work in an office, is just how correct they really were. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Batman Beyond, the animated series. Uh, who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I think the American version started in 1999. Um, the Nanny finished in 1999, which was good for, for the guys, for everyone in the cast apart from Fran, who, from what I heard, couldn't stand her voice. Yeah, anybody uh, watching the show with headphones on, as soon as she said, Mr. Sheffield, it's like everything starts bleeding and the dogs start howling at the back. <laughs> anyway, continue. Home Improvement finished. Uh, Mad About You finished after seven years. That was a beautiful series. I love that. Uh, Dawson's Creek was still running. Uh, just seeing what else. Mystery Science Theater 3000 stopped its run back then. That went from 88 to 99. Uh there's a whole bunch of others that we probably haven't heard. Some of the responses we're getting, like Susie loved TLC, I think is the band, uh, yeah. and Futurama and Michelle had a thing for West Wing. I've got to say, West Wing was actually a very good show. So, uh, yes, very happy with that. Um, Farscape started in 1999. One of the versions of Power Rangers started in 1999. Uh, and I think I'll close it down at that apart from the movie section which we'll get to in a second uh jeffrey what do you got for the uk section in 1999 yeah i've got some uh, very interesting sort of facts and tidbits as well so the one thing that intrigued me was in 1999 carlton communications spent 91 million pounds not only to buy 300 films from universal studios catalog but at that stage they bought the itc film library so that actually scored them, uh, amongst other things, the entire Jerry Anderson catalog. So um, they were lucky enough to uh, get that. And of course, uh, uh, rode the merch uh, train after that. So they did very well out of all the, uh, the licensing. So I don't know how well the films went, but uh, certainly a good score for uh, picking up Jerry Anderson. A, uh, you mentioned who wants to be a millionaire. Well, uh, that actually started in the UK and uh, on this particular year in 1999 there was a contestant that won 125,000 pounds on that show even though he got the question incorrect but he was actually allowed to keep his money and the reason why is that when the uh, researchers uh, were looking up the answers they actually supplied the wrong answer uh, so but the mistake was quickly picked up by the viewers so given the fact that they stuffed up meant that uh, he was allowed to keep the money. Also, uh, I think someone mentioned about the uh, the Millennial Dome, but uh, that was a very good pickup. But this was also the year that Comic Relief actually had a, uh, a telethon that included a, a Doctor Who parody that featured Rowan Atkinson as the, uh, the Doctor, 
Julie Swahala as his sidekick and Jonathan Price as the master. And I remember when that came out, all the Doctor Who fans actually spun out. That was just absolutely amazing to see that. And we, we still all remember it now. So uh, you mentioned that to a Doctor Who fan. They go, oh, yeah, I love that uh, little parody. And that was in 1999. Also in 1999, uh, Teletubbies was launched in Japan. And when you think about it, it's the perfect show for Japan. You know, it's sort of uh, all <laughs> colourful, bright, doesn't say much, bit trippy, perfect for Japan. Now, depending on how old you are, uh, does anyone remember the uh, Australian actor called Rudd Hull who had an emu and he used to do a puppet thing? Well, um, actually, uh, 1999 was the year that he actually f fell off his roof while uh, trying to adjust his television aerial. So uh, that was a lesson that Molly Meldrum didn't learn years and years later. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon made uh, its debut on British television. Uh, the long-running series Bob the Builder premiered on BBC One in this year. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Uh, and I saw enough of those episodes with uh, Josh as he was growing up. I think I saw the entire repertoire. I think there should be people should be asking about this show, can we fix it? And I don't think the answer is no, we can't. <laughs> we'll Actually... There's a bit of a question to ask, Jeffro. What happens when, what do you call Bob the Builder when he's out of work? It's uh, Bob the Doll Bludger. It's just Bob. <laughs> Bob a <and> job. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. So also, uh, in this year, we saw the two Ronnies reunited on television. So if you're a fan of British humour, you'll know who the two Ronnies are. And it had been the first time they'd been on television since 87. So it was a very special, rare occasion. Uh, this year was also the first time that the show Walking with Dinosaurs uh, appeared on uh, UK television. And it was watched by 18.9 million viewers. I guess with a combination of Jurassic Park and the, the big thing about dinosaurs and CG and all that, to see it on television made it the most watched uh, science show in the UK of all time and the 19th mo most watched show ever on UK television. And um, this was also the year that BBC Two started screening Doctor Who repeats. So uh, Australia got a lot of Doctor Who repeats, but uh, the UK didn't ha at all. So they actually started off with Spearhead from Space and I guess all the... Uh, uh, the, the the fans in the UK were dragging out their videotapes and recording like crazy. And um, the last trivia fact was that uh, this was also the year that uh, uh, Spice World appeared on um, UK television. So considering it was a 1997 movie, we're talking about 1999. That's how long it took folks for things to get on television, sometimes two years. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's my 1999 facts. And, and people who watch Spice World on their TV suddenly had to go out and buy a new TV because all their TV screens just cracked because the show was abysmal. So there you go. Um, uh, two things. Uh, Ange made a reference to the Crusade, the sequel to Babylon 5. Only went for like nine episodes. So you could actually have the entire series on like one or two videotapes or one DVD if you're buying it back in the time. All right. So sci-fi movies for 1999. Ironically, for 84, we had millions of them. 95, we had, was 95? A lot. Not so much for 1999. So some of them are absolutely about as bleedingly obvious as you can get. Uh, the Matrix, of course, came out in 1999. You want the blue pill or the red pill? We're apparently in it right now. So how about that? Those aliens are probably wondering what the hell's going on on this entire planet. But uh, there you go. We're in the Matrix. Galaxy Quest, of course, the takeoff of Star Trek uh, came out that year and was uh, very, very popular. And if you remember the scene in Galaxy Quest when um, – who's the main actor who's in that movie? I've forgotten his name. Tim Allen. Uh, Tim Allen. When Tim Allen walks into the into the toilets and you see all these Klingon guys at the urinals, I've actually seen that in real life at conventions, so that's actually quite quite funny, actually. Um, one film that came out that year, which uh, I was really surprised about, was Wing Commander, based on the video game, uh, which featured Mark Hamill. And for those who remember it, the video game was very popular, but the film tanked big time. It was so badly received. People were really up in arms over it, and they... Like the way the Kilrathi were treated, they changed everything about them. And as a result, the film absolutely died a death. So there you go. Uh, speaking of films that did do uh, quite well, though, Bicentennial Man with good old Robin Williams. Um, 
which was actually quite good. The whole thing of like robots becoming so self-aware and, you know, do they have a place in the world? You know, it's almost like your datas and, uh, and the artificial intelligence and all the rest of it. So um, that was actually quite an, uh, an important one that uh, came out at the time. Uh, you had the astronaut's wife. Uh, so, but with, if you just read the title, it's like, okay, well, you know, it could have been like the astronaut's husband, but no, that's how it was back in 1999. Um, virus, <laughs> ironically, came out, it's like, it's, it's almost like the sequel's coming out this year. So with all the stuff that's going on in the world at the moment. Um, the Iron Giant uh, mm. came out, which was, uh, I think it was an animated film, if I recall. It is, um, yeah. Yeah, if you're a bit of a Will Smith fan, a bit of the Wild Wild West, um, where they were doing some absolutely crazy stuff in terms of big, big machines and just you know, just kind of nuts in the end. I don't know if you guys ever saw Wild Wild West. I never did, but uh, I, yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. Actually, you know, you know why there was a giant spider in that? <coughs> I did hear, but I can't remember what the reason was. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Goober and Peters were the two producers on Batman and Batman Returns. What they wanted to do for for the, one of the next Batman movies was to have a giant metal spider, and basically they were told no, so they went and shot Wild Wild West. And chucked in this giant spider. Very good. Um, that would make a lot of sense. I did hear it wasn't originally planned for the movie, and they were able to chuck this thing in. Uh, has been mentioned by Ange, and I hope Ange is doing this by memory and not looking this up on the internet because he does have a tendency of cheating sometimes. My favourite Martian. Uh, now, the funny thing is, when you have classic TV series and you convert them to films, sometimes they don't always work. And to be honest, I never saw my favourite Martian, Jeffrey. You would have. Uh, you had to think it ranked up, uh, ranked against the, the series. Yeah, I had I had to see it because it had Christopher Lloyd, of course, who's in Buckaroo Bonzo. So I see any movies that uh, those guys are in, but it didn't really hold a candle to the the, the television show. I mean, there's as you said, it just because every time you saw it, you just remembered back on the television show. So it's just some things are just not going to work, and um, it's like when they did uh, McHale's Navy. Same thing. It's like you go, oh, I remember the old McHale's Navy. I'm not enjoying this. So, yeah. Yeah, you just uh, some things you shouldn't touch. Ironically, of course, the TV series of My Favourite Martian is actually on TV at the moment. So how good is that? Um, someone's made a comment. I don't know who this is uh, about Damon Dark being uh, <laughs> debuted at Aussie Con 3. Yeah, that is technically a sci-fi show. So uh, there you go. If you're not sure what Damon Dark is, it actually has, believe it or not, a Wikipedia entry. So you can actually look it up for yourself. So maybe one day this show will end up on Wikipedia. Um, I always like here's one. Uh, someone's written about the Notting Hill quote. You know, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love me. For this show, you could say, I'm just a nerd standing in front of another nerd asking him to go to the convention with me. <laughs> anyway, move on. Um, some uh, Japanese stuff came through in 1999, Godzilla 2000, because they're obviously planning ahead, and Gamora, uh, Gamora, Revenge of Iris. There you go. So, yeah, you say Iris. Eh? Yeah, I can sort of see what they mean. Get it? See it? Iris? Anyway. Um, <laughs> Iris, Goo Goo uh, Dolls. Eh? Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, that. Uh, that, that well, they, they were, they're trying to teach the Revenge of Iris in the school, but none of the pupils turned up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, got to put a lid on these jokes. <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, Very good. Um, there's only about four more to go. Uh, Escape from Mars, um, which is kind of ironic. We're talking about the Martian uh, very, very soon. Uh, Muppets from Space, and that's not referring <laughs> to <laughs> Oh, golly, there you go. Um, uh, Inspector Gadget, we we're discussing. Um, actually, no, we haven't discussed it. Uh, Inspector Gadget came out, the theatrical film. Uh, Mystery Men, someone's already just mentioned Mystery Men, um, on the thing here. Uh, superheroes who necessarily didn't with really bizarre and wacky superpowers. That was actually quite good, different. Um, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, then then do so. It's funny when you have superheroes who can do things that just make no sense whatsoever, like the guy who can make himself invisible, providing you're not looking at him. Um, and there you go. Another guy with the swing, swings a hammer or an axe or something. Um, the shoveler, that's right. Yeah, he just shovels really well. <laughs> there we go. Uh, two more. Um, so that year, the 1999, 1999 was the year the mummy came out, uh, Absolute Sleep Hit came out, Absolute Nowhere, and was a huge success. And um, that was actually a very good film, the start of uh, where Kit Brendan's Fraser upstairs and made him very, very big and successful, uh, along with Rachel Weisz. Uh, like a lot of things, start at the top, and as the sequels went on, it sort of just went down the hill a little bit, but uh, The Mummy You Can't Beat. Uh, and, of course, the last one, it actually turns 21 years old in a couple of weeks' time. 
It's old Misa back. Yes, it's the old Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace, where it all kicked off. So uh, there you go. So, uh, yes, Jar Jar Binks turns 21 in a couple of weeks' time. So have to hold a candle and get a cake and blow it out and do whatever. So uh, how good is that? Well, in terms of other films that came out that were non-sci-fi, uh, and these were popular culture ones, uh, Fight Club came out, which was a which was on TV the other week, and still a really weird film. Uh, you, Not a bad one, but it's a little bit weird in, in parts in terms of how it all sort of comes together. Uh, being John Malkovich, which I never saw, but apparently was very good. Uh, the Blair Witch Project, which was one of the cheapest films ever made. Uh, and I believe it was only one camera and a couple of people in a park at night or in the forest. Uh, the Sixth Sense with uh, Bruce Willis, where he's where the kid sees dead people. Or uh, nerds. Uh, yeah. Dead nerds, yeah. Uh, American Beauty, which won Academy Awards galore. American Pie, uh, Eyes Wide Shut, as was mentioned by someone before, Toy Story 2, another Matt Damon film, The Talented Mr. Ripley, uh, as was mentioned, Notting Hill, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You with Heath Ledger, yeah. uh, and the, the one that, which was technically sci-fi, but you probably won't, won't realise this, but it, it, if you remember the trailer for Austin Powers 2, it said, if you see one film this year, see Star Wars. If you've got time after that, see Austin Powers, The Spice You Shagged Me, which was great. Uh, Cruel Intentions with Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, Ryan Philippe, and oh, her name just, I missed, it's gone. Uh, the Green Mile with Tom Hanks. South Park, the movie, Bigger, Longer, Louder, which there's a story behind the, the beginning of that scene with, uh, and I can't tell you what the name of the first song is because I'm not going to say the actual second word to it. But the first word is uncle. Uh, Big Daddy. Um, Deep Blue Sea. Now, there was a shark film that was just terrible. Uh, what else do we have? Sleepy Hollow came out that year. Uh, Bow Finger with Eddie Murphy and Steve Martin. Dogma, another um, Matt Damon film, which was a Kevin Smith directed and written film in which he stars with uh, his longtime buddy, who is... Matt Damon and Jason Mewes. No, not no. Who's Matt Damon's buddy? Oh, ben, um, Affleck. ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. Yes, Jason Mewes is Kevin Smith's buddy. I was just trying to be smart. Yeah. Okay. Didn't work. You lost it on me because I'm not that smart. Double O Seven. The world is not enough with Pierce Brosnan that came out. Um, Thomas Crown Affair, another Pierce Brosnan film. Uh, and as you mentioned, Wild Wild West, which was a bit weird, uh, minus the giant spider and a couple other things, it was actually quite an interesting film. Uh, but yeah, and my favourite quote from The Mummy, which I think has already, already been mentioned, where it says, you know, hey, old Colonel, you're on the wrong side of the river. Wrong side, you got it wrong, wrong dude. Sorry, we got other camels. He goes, hey, Benny, you're on the wrong side of the river. Yes. Funnily enough, I didn't like the film when it first came out. I had to watch it over and over on DVD for some reason, and then I loved it. And then the second one, which was pretty good, and then all the Scorpion uh, King sequels that came out of it were terrible. Um, yeah, it was actually Horses, Not Camels, so someone else someone else has already written the uh, the quote and got it right. So uh, there you go, MPS, you need to go back and watch your movie again. Um, I like the fact that someone's actually written that with Phantom Menace that the pod race is still going. Uh, you can believe about that. And someone actually mentioned that uh, Phantom Menace was atrocious, so clearly not fans. Oh, that was Michael. So uh, there you go. Um, yeah, so very, very good. There's a lot of people sort of rega uh, relating to a lot of movies and TV shows at that time, so well done. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, who's saying Batman for 1999? What, nah, no, I don't it? know. No, Batman wasn't 1999. Yeah, 10 uh, years ago. Uh, Terminator 2 was 1992, 92, 91. Yeah. Hang on, we're going on different tangents now, so there you go. But 91, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. But anyway, there you go. So there you go. It's funny because uh, everybody will remember the uh, year 2000, the Y2K bug, which is a uh, long since passed and the kind of sagas it created. Uh, funny enough, from my point of view, I was actually working in the IT industry at that time, and I remember after it all happened and passed on and it was all forgotten, we had an office that had been completely abandoned at work, and I found a book. 
um, that someone had written in 1997 or 98, and it was like, the Y2K bug, protect yourself, the world's going to end. And I tell you what, I don't know who wrote it, but that dude would have made millions and billions of bucks for people who were just so paranoid about it. Uh, and then, of course, he would have, like, taken his money after the year 2000 when 2000 kicked in and just chuffed off to the Caribbean islands, counting his cash on the beach, thinking, what a bunch of suckers. Anyway, so there you go. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything uh, before I wrap up. So I'll get some final comments from my guys. Now, if you joined late and you're wondering why MPS and Jeffro are in the wrong spots, uh, MPS had a bit of a technical thingy happen earlier and he's just reappeared somewhere else. So uh, there you go. It sort of did, you know, weird, uh, weirded up the dynamic of the entire room. So there you go. Uh, before I go, uh, okay, so I'm going to do it in a different order now. So, uh, Jeffro, any final comments? A Mars a day helps you work, rest, and play. <laughs> Give it up. Freaking yeah, well, up. Oh, geez. It doesn't get any better than that. MPS, got anything for us, man? Uh, I'd rather have a Milky Way. Yeah, very good. There you go. Everybody's saying good night. We're going to say uh, good night as well. So uh, there you go. So whatever you do, enjoy the rest of the week. We'll see you next Friday, 8 o'clock. We're still on Friday. It's all good. And in the interim, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay. Farewell and uru. Bye. See ya. Watch